Hey everybody, welcome back to the Revelation Bible Study. My name is David Kenny, and I'm the pastor of Walden Community Church. This year we decided to go through the entire book of Revelation. We're still only in Revelation chapter 2. We're going to start at verse 20, and you're more than welcome to follow along with us. Verse 20 says, But I have this against you. Jesus is writing to the church in Thyatira. That you tolerate that woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, and is teaching and seducing my servants to practice sexual immorality and to eat food sacrificed to idols. See, this is why people don't like reading Revelation, because of passages like this. And they ask themselves, am I supposed to know what this means? Am I supposed to know these names? Am I supposed to know these places? That's why we're going slowly. We're going slowly through the book, just a little bit at a time. Five minutes here, eight minutes here, baby steps, breaking it down. Jesus says, but I have this against you, that you tolerate that woman Jezebel. Is this a real woman? Well, yeah, Jesus says that woman. Do we think her name is actually Jezebel? No, her name was probably changed to protect the innocent. Her name is a symbol that represents a real person, a symbol of somebody who was a real person in the Old Testament. Jezebel was the wife of King Ahab. This ancient queen had a reputation. She was a murderer. She was a prostitute. She was an enemy of God. Her story is told in the book of Kings, and her marriage to King Ahab was more than likely political. She was a foreigner, and so she brought with her all kinds of foreign worship to the kingdom, and much of it centered around sexual immorality. Of course, the prophets of that time stood against her. She was most famously uh, tried to wipe out all of the followers of God. And the prophet Elijah said that Jezebel would one day die by being eaten by dogs. Jesus says this about the woman in the church. I gave her time to repent, but she refuses to repent of her sexual immorality. Behold, I will throw her into a sickbed, and those who commit adultery with her I will throw into great tribulation unless they repent of her works. And I will strike her children dead. And all the churches will know that I am he who searches mind and heart, and I will give to each of you according to your works. Now, tell me something. Does this sound like Jesus is okay with this woman's actions? No. <laughs> Jesus says you have allowed false teaching in the church. Just like King Ahab, you have intermarried with a pagan, and she has brought with her all of these false gods and false practices into the church. And there is something here, there's something important. Jesus says in verse 20, But I have this against you, that you tolerate that woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess and is teaching. Is this woman just the wife of someone in the church? Or do you think she's perhaps someone who's in the nursery or someone who's working in the kitchen? No, Jesus says she's a prophet in the church. She's a teacher in the church. Does Jesus say, well, and the problem is she's a woman? No, Jesus doesn't have an issue with her being a woman. He has a problem with what she is teaching. He has a problem with her influence in the church. He says she refuses to repent of her sexual immorality. Behold, I will throw her into a sickbed, and those who commit adultery with her I will throw into great tribulation, unless they repent of her works, and I will strike her children dead. Does that sound like Jesus is okay with sexual immorality? Maybe even a little? Well, maybe if Jesus heard my side of the argument. Or maybe if he could just see how much in love we really were. Or maybe if he knew just how wonderful we make each other feel. I think he'd understand. I think God would understand because I think God wants me to be happy. God says, I will strike her children dead. Why would a loving, understanding God do that? Because God cannot tolerate false teaching. Not in his church. And I know this passage sounds harsh, but read in those lines. Read what Jesus says. He says, she refuses to repent of her sexual immorality. Unless, right? Unless they what? Unless they repent. So does that mean God is at his wit's end? 
No. Is, is this the last straw for God? No. He is allowing her to repent. And he says, you know what? I'll wait a little longer. Wow. I mean, when you think about the fact that he compares this woman against Jezebel, a woman in the Old Testament who was a murderer and a queen who brought lawlessness and sexual practices into the Jewish faith, and God says, I don't like what she's doing. I don't like what she's teaching. But, Jesus says, I will hold back punishment. I am patient. God is patient with us. God is patient with our sin. He's being very clear. He's telling this church exactly what he expects. He's making sure that there's no doubt. And remember, these churches that are receiving these revelation letters, they are living in a time of persecution. They are on the run. They are living in hiding. They are in fear for their lives. And it would probably be much easier for them to adopt the practices and beliefs of the world around them just to fit in. It'd be easier for them to ignore all the hard teachings of the Bible and just go with the flow. But Jesus encourages them. He says, hold on, stay true to what is right, and I'll be patient with you a little longer. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.